Spinosaurus is weird. Let's just get that out of the way. Ever since it was discovered, we knew that it was odd. Yet, somehow, as time has gone on, it only gets weirder. Yet, despite, or maybe because of that weirdness, Spinosaurus has become infamous all over the world. It's been called the biggest theropod, the most dangerous, a monster that could snap a T-Rex's neck. But was it really? What was Spinosaurus? Honestly, we might never know the truth, but due to recent discoveries, we might at least have a decent idea. I'm going to take you on a voyage through time, starting with the first discovery of Spinosaurus and all the crazy stuff that's happened ever since. It's a bit of a wild ride, starring the Germans in World War II, the Moroccan fossil trade, and fish. Lots and lots of fish. Now then, let's cast off. For the first stop on our journey, we have to head to Egypt, all the way back to the year 1912. Richard Markgraf found the original skeleton of Spinosaurus, a collection of vertebrae, ribs, teeth, and a lower jaw. This specimen was described and named three years later by the paleontologist Ernst Stromer. Luckily enough, I managed to find an online copy of Stromer's description, translated into English. He mentions that, due to how the bones were preserved, they were extremely fragile, some crumbling into pieces when cleaned. Enough of them survived for him to put together a description. On page 2, he says, In any case, the jaws, teeth, and dorsal vertebrae suffice to characterize the form as new being sufficiently in contrast to all hitherto known dinosaurs. In other words, whatever Spinosaurus is, it's unlike anything he had ever seen. Stromer describes the jaws as long and slim, painted with many tiny foramina, meaning that they're covered in tiny holes, which we'll dive into later. Stromer also draws many comparisons to the recently described T-Rex in this paper, noting just how different Spinosaurus' remains are. He hypothesizes that the complete lower jaw would have reached a length of 120 centimeters, or about 4 feet for my fellow Americans. The teeth, then, are very interesting. Going by the sockets in the lower jaw, he notes that not all teeth would have been the same size, with the biggest ones being in the front and rear of the jaw, with short teeth in front of and behind both areas. Each tooth was long and slender, rather like those of a modern crocodile. He does note, though, that the teeth of the upper jaw appear to be curved backwards more than the ones in the lower jaw. Going down the body, Stromer then talks about the vertebrae. They're large and tall, with massive spinous processes, those long blades rising up from the back of the vertebrae. As you can probably guess, these are what gave Spinosaurus its name. Once again, Stromer stresses how weird they are for not only dinosaurs, but essentially all tetrapods. He floats a few explanations, such as them being huge muscle attachment sites, or a structure for a fatty hump, but decides that the best explanation is probably that they supported a tall sail, and I do mean tall, over 5 feet tall at its peak, possibly up to 6. There were a few smaller bone pieces that he describes, but in the end, he classifies Spinosaurus as a massive carnivorous dinosaur, and gives it the name Spinosaurus aegypticus a spined reptile from Egypt. After their description, the fossils of Spinosaurus were put on display at the Paleontologis Museum in Munich until 30 years later when tragedy struck. As the Allies advanced on Germany, Stromer begged museum officials to hide or relocate his fossils, but they paid him no heed. Sure enough, their arrogance resulted in the fragile remains of Spinosaurus being annihilated in an allied bombing raid. Spinosaurus was lost to us forever, or so we thought. Then, in 1983, a new dinosaur was discovered, Baryonyx walkeri, a mid-sized carnivore with a hauntingly familiar visage. This dinosaur was immediately recognized as a close relative of Spinosaurus. Though much smaller, Everything about it was almost identical to Spino, other than it lacking those massive spines. 
Nevertheless, Baryonyx was complete enough for us to get a great picture of what we could expect Spinosaurus to look like. Its discovery dragged Spino back into the public consciousness, and it wasn't alone for long. In the 90s, new Spinosaurid material started popping up in North Africa. Spinosaurids are relative of Spinosaurus, as you can probably guess. Some vertebrae were found, and referred to a new Spinosaurid that would have rivaled Spinosaurus itself in size. Called Sigil Massasaurus, scientists are still torn on whether or not it's its own genus or not, due to just how similar it is to Spinosaurus. But then another new dinosaur was found, this time all the way over in Brazil. A rescue from the fossil market, the sellers had broken, bashed, acid etched, and otherwise brutalized the specimen. This resulted in a tangled mess that was so frustrating to unravel, the poor thing was given the genus name Irritator, even though its preparation was a total nightmare. Irritator was nevertheless recognized as a large Spinosaurid, rather closely related to Spinosaurus itself, and we'll have a bit more to say about it later. Up next was the huge Suchomimus tenorensis, a terrestrial predator from Niger, which bore a long, thin snout and massive, powerful arms. It also, unlike those we've seen so far, had a low sail running along its spine. By this time, more bits and pieces of Spinosaurus itself were appearing in North Africa, scattered across several countries, ranging from Egypt to Morocco. And if you know anything about the 90s, then you know that something else happened in those years. Something really important happened to both the worlds of cinema and paleontology. With the release of the Jurassic Park series, interest in dinosaurs absolutely exploded, and many people became much more familiar with them. Not just the big names like T-Rex and Velociraptor, but even the hidden mysteries of paleontology became public knowledge. And in search of bigger, more dangerous predators for the series, the creators of Jurassic Park 3 decided to introduce a new big bat. With this appearance, Spinosaurus exploded onto the world stage, shown as a gigantic, deadly beast, able to tear apart planes or snap a Tyrannosaurus neck. It was portrayed as a grappler with powerful jaws and massive arms and claws. Honestly, for its time, it wasn't an awful portrayal, other than it being turned into a kaiju. Paleo forums were flooded with images and art for Spinosaurus for years afterward, with many people declaring it their favorite dinosaur. Then in 2014, something unexpected happened. We found another Spinosaurus. Not a relative, not fragments but an honest-to-goodness Spinosaurus, and it turned our understanding of it on its head. Described by Nizar Ibrahim and his team, though it was smaller than the original specimen, this new Spino preserved regions of the body that we didn't know anything about, the pelvis and the legs. The pelvis was much smaller than most theropods, the legs were also small for their size, but stocky. Spinosaurus had shrunk, at least in height. Instead of a kaiju, it probably would have been a stellar swimmer, well adapted to stroll along the riverbanks and dive its head underwater, snatching up huge freshwater and brackish fish. It was even proposed that it may walk around on all fours, making it the first four-footed carnivorous dinosaur ever. Newer studies have since walked back on this particular idea. We now know that its center of mass would have been right above the hips, making it quite easy for it to walk around on its hind legs. And then the next discovery hit, in 2020. Going back to the previous specimen, Ibrahim's team managed to excavate the entire tail of the same animal. It revealed that Spinosaurus had a massive paddle-like tail, one which would have let it swim rather efficiently, if slowly. Today, while studies keep coming out debating to what degree Spino lived in the water, one thing is clear. Spinosaurus was an extremely odd dinosaur, adapted for hunting fish and capable of swimming better than just about any other dinosaur. 
Isotope analysis of the teeth show that it spent plenty of time in the water. Dense limb bones probably helping to provide ballast. Though it may not have been a hyperactive pursuit predator, it was definitely a very successful dinosaur. We've found tens of thousands of Spinosaurus teeth all over North Africa, and some fragmentary remains suggest the genus may have even made it all the way over to South America, which had begun to split from Africa around this time. Spinosaurus has seen many, many changes from when it was first discovered. It went from being seen as an odd, fish-eating kangaroo lizard to a massive, beautifully derived predator. An adult animal could easily reach 50 feet in length, and well over 15 feet tall, measuring to the top of the sail. The weight estimates do vary, the lowest we get is still over 6 tons, possibly up to 10. It was a capable swimmer, even if it couldn't go too fast. While it primarily went after fish, it probably wouldn't pass up turning a smaller dinosaur into its meal. From the neck up, it would have looked similar to a modern heron, but with crocodile jaws. The pits dotting its snout would have been sensitive to pressure changes in life, letting it feel the movements of its prey, or subtle shifts in the current. The purpose of its massive sail is still unknown. It could have casted shadows to lure in prey, or perhaps caught the wind to let it move silently downriver. Maybe it was just a tall and proud display feature to show how big and strong it was. The visuals backed up by two huge, powerful, clawed arms. Its short legs could have kept it steady on unstable ground. And then that massive, unforeseen tail. A great way to help it swim. Funnily enough, there's one last thing to add. Recently, a paper was published, one which took a closer look at the skull of Irritator, that close relative of Spinosaurus. Thanks to careful observation, it was revealed that it was able to stretch its jaws extra wide, like a pelican, possibly allowing it to swallow prey whole. I guess that's another thing we can add to the pile of weird parts that make up Spinosaurids. And I can't wait to see what comes next. Music